Hi everyone, it's Tara from Chaley's Couture Quilting and today I want to show you how I base the quilt for custom quilting. In a previous video I showed you how I do it for edge to edge with either computerized or with hand guided pantographs. But today I do something a little bit different. So let me turn your on. Alright, so I have a customer's quilt up here. I like to pin base and you know, I know it's a long arm. I want to get a long arm so I won't have to pin base, but this pin base is kind of easy. I'm not on the floor. I'm not worried about having puckers on the back and kind of get, trying to get it all tight and everything. So it's a lot easier than it looks. And I normally pin base so that it doesn't distort as I'm quilting. So I have it pretty much ready to go. I do, I try to do it as I go. Simply because you never know who, what kind of backing you're going to get. And some backings, you know, they could be pieced. They could be cut that little off. And you, even though you put it with your, your um, selvage on your bars, I mean, maybe there's a little, maybe it wasn't like really straight on the sides. So... Sometimes it tends to want to wrinkle a little bit. And that's really the purpose of the pin basting. Because once you get pin basted, if you want to advance back and forth, you're going to have it secure so that if there isn't any kind of distortion from rolling, you're not going to really hurt it that much. But I like to take an extra measure. And when, I poss when possible, I will quilt as I go. And I will change threads a lot. I don't mind doing that. I'm not a person that does all the green in a quilt and comes back. I like to work in my section, see how it's going to look, and then go on. But it's really personal preference, and it really is what type of quilt are you quilting? You know, what do you want to do with that? So I prepare it the same way. I put it on my roller, top on my roller. I don't float. And my main reason is because I'm going to do a lot of quilting here. And quilting likes to push and move in different spots. And I just have better success when I have it pinned to a leader. I know when I get down, it's going to be relatively in a straight line. Because if there were any fullness, fullness sorry, uh, in, the, in the quilt, it's going to already kind of man manifest itself as you roll. So by the time you get to the bottom, you got a straight line. So that's the reason why I keep it, and I really advocate for that, but I know everybody likes and has their own way of doing things. And also, I don't spend so much time fussing with it. I don't have to like flap open, flap open my batting and flap my top, because I do all the work and I take my time at the beginning of, the, of it to get it nice and straight so that I don't have to worry about readjusting. I don't like readjusting. It's like making a bed over and over again. It, 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 well, no, it's not happening for me. But, you know, everyone's their own person, but I'd like to share what I do. So, I did it the same way. I measured my strong seam at the top. I found the middle, which was the middle of the star quilt. And then I did the bottom, which had a very similar seam as the top. I always go with the lowest measure because you can't make a quilt bigger. Okay. You, you can ease it in so that it, the natural thing of quilting takes things in. It can ease into your blocks a little bit if there's a little bit of extra, but you can't make it grow. So I take the 74 and a half and that's where I go on and I plan accordingly. So when I first pinned here, I did a channel lock all the way across. Like my other video, I basted the sides and the top with the pins. I did a belly bar basting. If you can see, it's going to be hard to see down there while I did that. And then I left my pins in since it was custom. So you can see like where they, they were when I first did it before I basted it across. And I do long stitches, up down stitches. I don't do a running stitch. I move my machine a little at a time. And I baste it 
And if I see some full areas, I might put some more stitches in that spot just to make sure it all gets eased in. So that's how I do it for getting it on there. I do like a pin and thread based all around the rectangle of what's in my quilting space. Then after that, I start pinning in all these sections here. So pinning in all the spots just to keep it stabilized so that I can start working in those areas I need to work in for the quilt. Okay, and pretty much as it goes and you advance, just kind of keep note of like the center line if you have that or some kind of vertical lines and horizontal lines. So as it advances, you can see visually if it's still aligned correctly as you go. So keep check of, of that as you advance. And after I'm fully done with this section, and this is a quilt where I may have to go like maybe a tad bit back a little bit to get a certain section. Um, but I'm set now because if I quilt everything in my zone now, it's going to be stable enough that I do feel comfortable going back and forth a little bit. Okay. So this is just a, an example of, of what you can do. There's people that will do pretty much a similar way with thread. I prefer the pins because it's really fast. And I don't have to worry about threads all over my floor and getting caught up in my belts for my computer system. That would be a mess. So the less thread is what I believe in because I have a belt driven system for my computer eyes and I don't want that getting stuck in there. So I don't do a lot of thread basting throughout the body and that's just personal preference. Okay, so I think I covered everything. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Chaley's Couture Quilting, and I have a website for long arming services if you're local. Um, and thank you very much for staying tuned. I hope it helped you. Bye. Hi, everybody again. I feel like an end credit scene right now. Got my Marvel going on. I'm back. Okay. Um, I forgot to mention I mentioned it in the other video but I'm I wanted to kind of just state it again about how I measure when I find my 74 and a half measurement for the quilt after I've done it the three ways I'm then going to make sure I go back to my center leader marking and divide that measurement in half stick two corsage pins in those areas accordingly so that I know where to put my top in up to after I've done my channel lock. So it would look something like this. Let me just push it around. All right. And then I'm coming over here. You can see I have a blue mark here. And I will take my measuring tape and do my mark. So that was 37 and a quarter on one side and 37 and a quarter on the other side because that made the um, the half. So when I come over here, and I'll just move one of these out of the way for a second. I would come over here to where that measurement was and I would stick it like so. And I would make sure that I pulled up my fabric to my channel lock line that I made with the stitching line and then I would then pin it and align it accordingly and I would do the same thing on the other side of the quilt okay I also have um, another security blanket for myself because I really really pay attention to how it moves throughout the whole process I try I have this pink thing pink long arm tape you kind of have to like secure it on your bars so trying to get that center straight in the middle is like oh boy yeah it's 
you could fuss with it for hours. So I'm not too much too worried about it because I know after I put it up here that I, when I did my measurement, I know that that's 74 and a half. I'll double measure it even again after it's already um, pin basted up there before I start thread basting it. So that I know it's 74 and a half across. I know it. The fabric is that is doing that. So then the pink is not so important to me except for one thing. It's like you could use a, a little pulley rope if you wanted to. It's just basically making sure that as you advance this quilt, it's going to advance at the same spot. So I have it pretty much parallel to my bars. I take a binder clip, secure it on the edge there. So I know that after it advances, the next, next part of this roll needs to go in that same spot because it's loose. It hasn't been quilted yet. Don't worry about the stuff that's been quilted at the top because you probably will notice it may go in a little bit. I'm more worried about the loose stuff coming out. I wanted to make sure it's there. And then I do the same thing over here and pin it. And it's not really the numbers that matter. It's where I've clipped it. And I just want to keep making sure it's a visual to me about it advancing and staying in those margins. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much what I do for it. Um, after I feel I got everything marked, I'll do that thread up down stitch all the way across like a rectangle all the way there and to keep it in place. So that's basically the purpose of this pink tape, just to kind of let me know how it's moving. All right, thank you again for joining in Shaley's Couture Quilting. Like me on Facebook and visit my website if you're local and need some long arming services. Thank you so much. Have a great day.